hello and welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Nina and I like to review Amazon items that I find affordable functional and just something that I just want to share with others because it's useful for daily life or items that I just really enjoy so today I'm really excited because I'm going to be reviewing the exerputic folding magnetic upright bike that I got about three to four weeks ago so I wanted to give some time uh, with unpacking the bike using it for a few weeks just so I could give my honest review of wh what I feel of it uh, just with the process of what I was looking for when I was shopping for bikes on Amazon was first I was looking at spin bikes because I do go to spin classes or I was when the gyms were open and I really enjoy that uh, but just as I was reading reviews and with those spin bikes they're like 250 and above on there I mean you could get something probably a little bit cheaper but I think the quality was just not there and if I'm gonna spend money on something I want it to be decent quality but not too pricey and review wise again I just there was like really mixed reviews on the spin bikes and a lot of people were saying it was really loud and squeaky after some time and I just didn't want something that was going to be super loud and not functional. Uh, so basically I ended up deciding on the upright bike just because two storage space wise it folds up, doesn't take a lot of space when you're even using the bike and if you're just leaving it out it doesn't take a lot of space up and it's easy to store in the closet. Also too I'm not planning on using it all the time, it's just more of a piece of cardio equipment when I want to zone out and not really have to worry about my surroundings. Right now I've been going on a lot of walks outside, but just with that it's like you always just have to be aware with what's going on around you and I just, I want something to zone out. That's something I miss so much about the gym. Um, you know, I could easily say, oh, like I could go for a run outside and that, like I used to zone out on, but I do have injuries that I have to be aware of. More in on my both feet over quarantine back in April. I was having a lot of knee issues and still feeling that, so I have to be really careful. Looking to go to physical therapy, but right now, still with things just being a little bit uncomfortable here in Connecticut, just because the numbers were so high with COVID, I just rather wait a little bit before I go anywhere. So yeah, with what I was looking for was something that was functional, easy to store, not an eyesore, easy to put together too was something that I was really looking for just because I did put it together myself. Um, something that's lightweight, something that's actually gonna last. I wanted a bike with a monitor and this one did have a monitor, so I'm gonna go over that when we go and look at the bike in person and all of that. Um, so and also of course affordable so those were what i was looking at and then this bike just fit all the things so basically i strayed away from originally the spin bike to this bike and also too i wanted something that during the winter when it's cold out and if it's snowing and there's a snow day and i can't go to the gym that i have so looking to use the bike about twice a week and i want it to be able to last a while so without further ado let's go over the unboxing that i did a couple weeks ago so we're going to go back in the past and then i'll go over the features of the bike and give my overall review of the bike so let's go here it is here's the bike finally i'm gonna put it together when i have a chance this box we shall see how this goes I don't know how many pieces are in it or how long it's going to take me, but we shall see. Alright, so everything actually looks pretty well packaged, which is good. Because I know that, especially when it takes a while to get something, there is a chance that it could be um, broken in some way during transit. So, so far so good. Everything looks in place as I open up the box and I'm going to take things out and I shall see how it goes as I start to unbox everything. pieces of the bike. I actually think, think it's cute that they put all the tools in this little um, compact thing. But the plastic thing, you know, you obviously you don't like wasting plastic, but it's still pretty convenient. Don't mind Ollie barking in the background. 
And then we have the little manual. Um, we shall see how this goes. I am not good at following directions, but I will try my best to actually listen to what it says. And then things, um, actually I don't know if this one's labeled, but over here, this is labeled right and left. It's just upside down. And then this is R and F, so I'm going to guess that everything is labeled. It has little wheels on it. And it's actually a decent size seat, so I'm excited about that. open this up to be able to get all the pieces and they were sort of falling out and I didn't want to get them out of their place because then I didn't want to get confused so that was a little tricky but I do appreciate that they're all in specific areas um so it just makes it more convenient and just more organized of when you put everything together and also in the manual um basically they label by numbers what each piece is and tell you what tool to use, so I have this wrench ready to go for when I put the base together. And yeah, we shall see how it goes. Um, I just have to like really figure out which number correlates to what piece in here, and then I think once I do that, it'll be pretty straightforward of putting everything together. Um, we shall see. <music> because I didn't realize that, I don't know, I don't even know what I did. But when I first did the front, I realized I did it the back backwards, so I had to unbolt everything and redo it. In the directions, I will say that for the back piece, it says that it should stay up, but I was looking at the back piece and this says rear, but it didn't have a sticker for up, so I just assumed that because of the front piece having the up on that side, I'm just assuming it is the same for the back. So I will continue putting this together. Alright, so we have a problem here. This is stuck and I can't get it out. I couldn't get this side in after this was super easy. It was nice and tight in there, it ended up working out, and then this side, I definitely got it caught on this little wrench, and now I can't get this off, and I have to figure out what to do, so stay tuned. Alright, so I was able to get the pieces together, there is something wrong with this one screw, but um, we hope for the best that... It's stable enough to not fall apart. Um, there aren't any extra pieces, so I can't really do anything about it. So I will finish putting the council on. <laughs>
wide seat with decent amount of cushion. It has pedals that have the change in strap resistance around your foot. Then it has the resistance knob that goes up to resistance eight, down to resistance one. You have the handlebars here that have the pulse monitoring, and then on the screen, you're able to monitor the pul uh, pulse as well as speed and calorie, all of that, which I'll go over shortly. It has the ability to be able to be able to fold it up. So take out this pin and then lock it into place easy to be able to store and then when you want to use the bike you just put the, the back down and then put the pin back in it has wheels on the front so those are easy on more wood surfaces on the carpet i notice it's just a little bit harder to move around but it's nice if you want something to be able to move around environment wise like to be able to put in the closet and all that so what we're going to do is we're going to go over the monitor next all right so here we have the monitor when you pedal is when it will turn on and as you can see is the p is for pulse so when you put your hands on the sides and you continue to ride for a while then it will change or it will start to monitor your pulse. I'm putting my hands on the pulse. And then basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sift through to the pulse. So it says that I'm at 78 for heart rate and I'm looking at my phone and it says I'm at 103. So a little bit of a difference in pulse. Let's actually just hold on a little bit because of my um, Fitbit has been on a little bit longer in regards to reading pulse compared to the monitor here. So now it's going down. Let's see, this is going pretty steady. So it is a little bit of a difference right now in pulse. So yeah, I mean, in regards, it's a okay place to be like using the monitor. It's not gonna be accurate in regards to calories. Overall, like I've been riding longer than my Fitbit is on. It's just that I haven't been taking my pulse as long. So my Fitbit has been on for two minutes and 48 seconds. It's at six calories. And then this is at 36 and it's been five minutes. So you could uh, see the difference in calorie wise that it does fluctuate a lot. I think that in average, it's about 100 and 150 calories higher than what my Fitbit reads. Really in regards to this, like um, to be more accurate, you're looking at your height, weight, uh, basal metabolic rate, and all of that. So this is just an estimate. It's not perfect, but at least it is decent in regards to be able to at least have a monitor and be able to keep track overall with speed and distance and all of that. The monitor does is it basically saves your last ride and so when you hop back on everything like distance wise you'll see it's 5.7 miles that's what I rode last time and then pressing the buttons it'll go through um, so time it does start from scratch but it keeps everything else so it says I burned 288 calories so on and so forth and then the speed so basically what you do to be able to reset this is you keep hold of the button so you hold it down and then you'll see that it starts back down to zero time-wise. And then you will see as it shifts through the different uh, settings on the screen that now my calories is back down to one. And if you keep pressing through, then you can change this and you'll see the distance is one as well. So it is cool in the sense that it does save what you did last, but you just want to remember on your new ride to set it back down to zero for everything or else you're going to go based off of your last ride. Right here, you'll see the knob. So you can change the resistance. So now it is on a higher resistance, so harder to pedal. And then you just, oh, I'm going the wrong way. That <laughs> is really hard. And then you shift down and then now we're down to two. So really easy. And again, here's the area for the phone. So you probably won't be able to see my head in this video, which is fine because I want to be able to show at least a little bit of the pedals and just overall seating of the bike. So as you can see, I'm uh, in regards to the seat adjustment, so I sort of showed it in when I was putting the bike together, but there's two different options for how close to the bike you are. And essentially, there's the option of 5'6 or under or above 5'6. I'm 5'7, so 
when I was putting the actual seat together on the bar, I put it further away from the front of the bike. And when I actually put the seat on the bike, I realized it was still too far away. So I ended up changing it to the settings closer to the bike. So it just allows for me to have a more comfortable feel when I have my hands on the handlebar. And then um, in regards to positioning on the bike, you want a slight, you want your knee to be overall pretty straight on the down motion, but you still want a slight bend. So with the seat height, that's what I was looking at when I was adjusting for comfort for my height and all of that. So overall, very comfortable ride, super easy, super quiet. And I mean, it's just enough of what I need for what I was looking for in a bike. Um, for me, like in spinning, you would typically get out of the seat or saddle as you say it. Um, I don't want anything like that right now. Like, I don't know if I would feel super comfortable getting out of the seat on this bike. Like, I don't know if the pedal would break. I mean, overall, they're pretty sturdy. It's just not something I was looking for in a bike when I was buying it. So it's not something I'd be doing. I don't know if I recommend it because I just don't know how uh, secure the pedal, how strong the bike would be in general to be able to do a type of workout where you're getting in and out of the seat. Um, it's more, I think, of just like a comfortable ride where you could just change the setting of how much resistance you have. So that's that. Come here. Come here. This is Ollie. Ollie, say hi. You excited to say hello to everyone? What's outside? Come here. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. All right, so final thoughts on the bike. I think that if you're looking for something that is super affordable, easy to store, easy to be able to move around, has an overall comfortable ride, uh, has easy gauges, not something that you're necessarily looking to have like a really, um, hardcore workout with, then this is the perfect bike. Overall, I love it. It's exactly what I was looking for in a bike. Uh, with using it for the last month, it definitely is worth the money. I think a, a thousand percent. I mean, 150 bucks for something like that, I think is a steal. Really curious to how it's going to be a year from now. But overall, I just think that the feature is it has with having a monitor, uh, easy seat adjustment and storage, it's just well worth the money and the comfort overall is really great. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos of Amazon finds that I find affordable and useful. 